So sometimes when you're hobbing you get to the point where you've just got a million different projects on the go and none of them really seem to be going anywhere. So you kind of get one half going and you sort of stop and move on to something else and then repeat. And I thought this this just isn't really working very well. I'm I'm basically not finishing anything. So instead of being sense point saying I'm not finishing anything, I'm just gonna stop and then finish something like I've already shown. I decided I would start an entire new project and just dedicate everything to that and just everything else can sit to the side for now. So I got my knife, file my clippers, and I said, what project would I like to do? And I thought, well, I quite like Kings of War. Let's see what I can do with Kings of War. And then I thought, opening an entire army, that's that's been unreasonable. There's gonna be sort of a hundred plus models. So they brought out the skirmish game Vanguard recently. I think it's recently, but it came out last year or two. So but you know what, I'll make a Vanguard make a vanguard army but I want to do something which is a bit more interesting than just I go and buy a box of models and then I build them and that's my army because that's a bit too easy so I sat down and said what could I do and I thought well I've got loads of models in the backlog they're never getting built let's choose those so that was the first step of the plan and the first thing which came to mind were these the Wall of Roses Infantry from Perry Miniatures. They are very, very good value for money. We get 40 figures for £20. So you're basically getting 50p a figure, which is, you can't really buy goblins for that in most places. So I had a really good idea where to start with. And I was looking for the different army lists in the football. I quite like the Kingdoms of Men. But then I wanted to use archers because they're already in the box. And they don't do archers, but the Brotherhood do. And I looked through the Brotherhood list and went, I really like this. There's no halflings, which I did want, but because they're men and Kings of Wars use whatever models you like, there's no reason I can't transfer these from Brotherhood to the faction with the halflings or Kingdoms of Men. I can I can switch in what I want here and there. So I was quite happy with that. So first I got the sprues for the the archers and the, the men with pole arms and you get 10 guys on, on the sprue and lots of head options and they mostly go together nicely and you've got these a slider body in between there a little bit of glue and they stay there the arms attach nicely, these are well designed Perry's were the guys who did all the games workshops and past stuff and while they are cheap they are very well detailed and they have very nice models they are slightly smaller than you've used to from games workshop but these are more closer to actual 28 millimeter as opposed to the more heroic which is going closer to 32 millimeter now so I was pretty happy with these there's lots of options here you got chainmail arms pompous arms just straight shirt arms and they all just glue onto the sides and you've you can make lots of variants from just these one sprue so when I expand this into a full army if I decide to do that these are definitely going to be one of the ways to go so other than that we also have the command scry I suppose it's called which has lots of heads lots of knights helms you've got a nice guy with a silly hat there if you use, I think that guy's bald no he's got a skull cap on but it's, it doesn't look of very good quality you got the command screens, a couple of knights here, and the Brotherhood. They are basically a faction of knights who are defending against the the abyss from taking over. So you've got lots of knights, lots of cavalry, and they also use lots of archers as their range thing. So they, they, the sprue fits them perfectly. And I thought, you know, I'll go with those. So we've got the commandy sprue here, where we've got. I think I've got four, I don't know, three knights in total off of these. So I only think I'll be using two in the list, but I wanna wanna have some extra guys laying around just to make it a bit more of an interesting project. So it's not just two interesting guys and then just loads of archers. Because the rules actually stop you having more than five of any single character option in the army list. You only have five bowmen, five spearmen, five knights, but we're not going to get five knights out of this, they're just too expensive to make a proper list from. 
and so we have this and then we started to put them together I'll probably do a video on this and they turn out pretty nice you've got a nice arch here sometimes they have an issue with the neck fit where the the circular part of the uh, neck doesn't quite sit right in the neck hole they could do have been a little bit more recessed but you can generally work with that so you've got an archer there got a guy with a bill hook here I'm not very familiar with pole arm terminology just a guy with a spear which is also an axe to me so it's pretty neat and then we've got this guy who uh, I cut his arm off and just couldn't find a post I like for it. it just didn't seem to work anyway but then he, he's got his arrows here so I thought you know he looks like he's fed up and just going home like he's that's it I'm off I'm done had enough of this fighting whereas this guy there looks like he's just about to twang someone in the face so you know that bit of character to the models this guy's a bit miserable tired works with a warband so well I've got the three knights I kind of wanted my commander to stand out a bit more and I wasn't quite sure how I'd do that until I was going through my bits box just a, a box of models I want to paint at some point and it pulled up this chappy who is a knight from the Dark Souls board game and I got the game and I found the plastic was awful it's very hard to clean up if you look here there's a very bad miscast where the, the belt the, the mold slipped and the belt just not even remotely close to aligned and this is pretty common from Chinese manufacturers the troll uh, I just showed previously this big guy he also had a massive uh, slip on him none of the belts fit there had to re-sculpt them, the chest you can still see a slight where it's merged, it just didn't work, it didn't, it did, it slipped and because Chinese quality is what it is, no one seemed to care so with this guy, the sword originally was a bit flimsy, it's still not great but extended out more which is kind of floppy and there. so I had to shape that up into a proper sword and then clean him up but he is slightly bigger get him in position than a War of the Roses guy but I think it actually works here like he's just a big strong guy in armor and he's slightly bigger than everyone else because he's kind of the biggest strongest one who's been sent on what are basically skirmish missions so I don't think his height's too exaggerated even though he's slightly out of scale with the rest I think he works just like these are sort of say five foot each sort of five five and a half and then this guy's sort of six and a half foot, he's kind of, he's getting there. And if you actually line up toe to toe, kind of playing with toy soldiers, you can see like it's kind of, if he's standing up straight, they'd have a similar in height there. Maybe compare it to the bowman instead. Except he's not, he's clearly bigger, but he's bigger in a way which isn't too exaggerated. And on the table, this guy's a bit bigger. Just, okay, that's your commander, he stands out a bit, so quite like that. And then I was looking for my bits box thinking, well, I don't just want to use the the Perry stuff, I want to try and add a bit more flavour to the, the army, so he fit in nicely and I'm sure I can paint his shield in the same colours as the, the arches will be and they're all going to have some armour on them painted up in the same colours, so he should match reasonably well. But anyway, I was going for the bits box and I ended up finding this. Now every Christmas there is a secret Santa on a form I go to and last year I signed up and I got a box of lots of random different stuff which is what I enjoy. I enjoy signing up for those because you get stuff like this. You just I have no idea what it is. The guy thought, no I'm not going to paint this, give it to someone else to try. And I'm like, okay sure, I'll give it a go. These are actually Mantix Ogres. There's two of them here. There's one slightly slouched over and one standing a bit taller. They've got a shield and an axe option and a two-handed axe option. And I quite like the design of these. The last thing I want to have an entire army of but as a single, single piece. I like where he's going. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to give these guys a shot. I'm going to stick him in the army. There's one option for him in the warband. He won't fit in the list, but I don't mind that. So see here, he still towers over the, the commander. He's still a bit bigger. Not a lot bigger, but he's still a bit bigger. 
and by the time he's got all his bits and pieces on him he'll definitely look like he's a he's an ogre as opposed to just a really big person so that's where I currently am in the project I want to try and build a couple of guys a night to get them going and then once that's done I will start the painting and I definitely want to do some painting videos on these guys there's uh, it's a lot of fun to paint them it's quite easy but it's also quite quite personal how you decide to paint them so I'm going to give that a go and once they're done I'll start carrying on the log where I figure out what color I want these guys to be on in my mind I'm thinking black I want black and maybe yellow sort of a yellow ochre which should cover nicely the black but I'm not quite positive yet I'm also kind of torn towards blue blue because blue is just it's very easy to paint it looks good sort of blue and black colors there are some nice examples color schemes on the back of the Perry box which none of them really stand out to me but they are quite interesting so for now that's what we're looking at and I shall return shortly with more thanks for watching